Coming up on today's Airborne, the Bell 505 Jet Ranger X achieves successful first flight. Mooney confirms new airplanes, two of them, and the space station crew returns to Earth. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. Bell Helicopter announced the successful first flight of the Bell 505 Jet Ranger X helicopter. It took place on Monday. The Bell 505 was designed based on extensive input provided by a customer advisory council. Bell Helicopter unveiled the Jet Ranger X at Heli Expo 2014 in February, and it's already received more than 240 letters of intent for the new model. The Bell 505 features a high visibility cockpit equipped with the Garmin G1000H integrated avionics suite. It's powered by the Turbo Mecca Arius 2R engine with FADAC to reduce pilot workload. The Bell 505 Jet Ranger X is a five-seat single-engine turbine helicopter that's designed to be the safest and easiest aircraft to fly in its category, while still remaining affordably priced. It has a cruise speed of 125 plus knots, a range of over 360 nautical miles, and a useful load of 1,500 pounds. The Jet Ranger X is a multi-mission helicopter designed to meet a wide variety of missions. As noted at Monday's Airborne program, Annan has learned that Mooney has a new airframe in the works, actually two of them. And get this, they're both diesel powered. Mooney International introduced the first new Mooney models since the restructuring of the company at Airshow China 2014. The company notes that the Mooney M10T and the M10J fill a need and reflect innovation at a different level of the fleet mix. And these aircraft will provide a stepping stone to the high performance M20 series. The M10T is a modern fixed gear composite trainer equipped with Continental's CD135 diesel engine. It's designed to train new pilots for the technically advanced aircraft that they will be flying in the future. The M10J will provide an upgrade from the M10T airframe with more luxuries and amenities for the owner pilot. In addition, the M10J will be equipped with the CD155 diesel engine. The M10J full-scale mock-up was shown in a retractable gear configuration. The M10 series is expected to gain certification and begin deliveries in 2017. After the break, ISS Expedition 41 crew returns to Earth. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to news spy at aero news.net. Three International Space Station crew members returned to Earth on Sunday after a 165 day mission that included hundreds of scientific experiments and several spacewalks. Expedition 41 Commander Max Surev of Roscosmos, NASA's Reed Weissman, and Alexander Gersh of the European Space Agency are back on Earth after traveling more than 70 million miles in space. During their time aboard the station, the crew participated in research focusing on Earth remote sensing, advanced manufacturing, and studies of bone and muscle physiology. They set a milestone for station science by completing a record 82 hours of research in a single week in July. A key research focus during Expedition 41 was human health management for long-duration space travel, as NASA and Roscosmos prepare for two crew members to spend one year aboard the space station beginning in 2015. With around 2,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, 
It's fun to look back and enjoy the places we've seen, the pilots we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. Very pleased with the performance of the unit. Engineers did a great job in taking the weight out, consolidated on that. We're through our company mechanical tests into doing our paperwork for an ASTM. As the LSA market demanded lighter engines, Lake Homing jumped in with their littlest Lake Homing, the O233. In this video, you'll see how they did it. Search the littlest Lake Homing on Aero TV's news channel. The founder of the Evergreen Aviation Companies which included the Evergreen Air and Space Museum in McMillanville, Oregon, has passed away. Evergreen Aviation has had its share of troubles in the recent past. The company, which began under Smith as Evergreen Helicopters in 1960, grew into a worldwide freight and passenger airline and included the Evergreen Air and Space Museum. But the airline and several of the subsidiary companies filed for bankruptcy in January and the Evergreen Campus in McMillanville is for sale. After these messages, Boeing Dreamliner is headed for a museum. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Ben 16 KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer, get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. Reporting that a Boeing Dreamliner has been donated to a museum sounds like a news flash from the future, but it's not. Tom Patton explains. Boeing and its employees joined the Puget Sound community to celebrate the donation of one of the original 787-8 Dreamliner flight test airplanes to the Museum of Flight in Seattle. The Dreamliner Boeing donated to the museum is known as ZA-003, the third 787-8 produced. The airplane has a unique past, first as part of the 787 flight test and certification program, and later circumnavigating the globe several times in 2011 and 2012 during the Dream Tour, which introduced the Dreamliner to more than 68,000 visitors in 23 countries. ZA-003 is the first of three flight test 787-8s Boeing plans to share with museums around the world, the aviation community, and future generations of Boeing employees and airplane enthusiasts. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. The Thunder on the Lakeshore Air Show in Manitowoc, Wisconsin has been canceled for 2015, the second year in a row that the event has been scratched. A news release from the Chamber of Manitowoc County cited the loss of military acts as one of the primary reasons for canceling the event. The release said, quote, Thunder on the Lakeshore has built its program around a combination of civilian and military acts. The loss of military participation has left a huge hole in the event that cannot be made up by any other civilian acts." End quote. But they also said the air show is an expensive proposition that's not getting any cheaper. The group has sponsored 21 air shows in the past, depending on the work of hundreds of volunteers and sponsors. They added that if economic conditions and government policies became more favorable, the door is open for considering another air show. The airplane factory has sold its first U.S.-based sling tail dragger, known as the Sling TD. This tailwheel version of the Sling 2 is the latest model designed by Mike Blythe and the airplane factory team. The tricycle gear Sling LSA, also known as the Sling 2, was conceived in 2006 and has been offered as a kit or a factory-built LSA. About a year ago, the first tailwheel sling was born. The Sling TD is almost identical to the Sling 2 in every aspect and characteristic, 
except of course it sits on its tail, and tail dragger lovers may say it's more fun. This ready to fly Sling TD SLSA should arrive in the US in about six months, and the airplane factory says they're excited to have it join the Sling family. Well, that's our program for Wednesday, November 12th. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new episode. And remember, the next generation of Airborne will be unveiled right after New Year's. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.